All right, let's get started. First thing is I'm gonna use 5.3.2. So things may look a little bit different if you're on a newer version. I'm gonna launch it. So once that opens up, I'm gonna click on the games tab. I'm gonna go over here to blank. Because like I said, I don't wanna work from a template. I think it's good to learn how all the setup is done, especially early on. So make sure you're on a blueprint, project default. I would include the starter content as well. And I'm gonna give this a name. We'll call this roll a ball plus. Make sure you choose a location to save it, create. This will probably take a little bit for you. Okay, and once it finishes, you're gonna see this giant open world, probably since this is the default map. We don't really want this. This would be way overkill for our little ball game. So go up to the top left for file, new level. We're going to create a basic level. Now, the big difference between these two, basic is gonna give us better lighting and a starting plane. It's not gonna do a whole lot of gameplay stuff for us. So just to save a little bit of time on lighting setup, which is not really the focus of this course, we're gonna do basic instead of empty, but it's pretty close. So click on basic, hit create. It's gonna create a new level. Now, the first thing I think we should do is I think we should save this level. So file, save current level as, and we should go into our content right here. I'm gonna make a new folder. So right click new folder, and we'll call this underscore game. I'm gonna put that right at the top of the content. And for my new map, I'm gonna call this sandbox. And you know, actually, before I save this, it might make sense to make a folder for maps. And let's save it inside of our maps folder. It'll save us time later on. So once you have underscore game maps, just like this, name it sandbox, hit save, because this is where we're going to do all of our game experiments. You can see over here, I press control space. It'll bring up this little window. Go into here, you can see your sandbox. Okay, great. Now, I think one thing that's worth mentioning before we continue, you go up to edit and then project settings, go to maps and modes right here. This editor startup map is defaulting to our open world map. We don't want that. If we close our editor and open it back up, we wanna make sure that we open to the map that we're working in. It'll just save us time. We'll click sandbox, right? Get that open, perfect. You know, we could do this ahead of time as well. This game default map, once we eventually build it out, we want to choose which map is going to open first when we run the executable. So we're just going to set this while we're here. Sandbox, okay. So we'll close that out. Before we start, I mentioned we are starting in the basic instead of the empty. Just take a look over on the right on what comes default for us. See, there's a folder over here for lighting. So we have a lot of things that make our level look really nice or give it a nice sky or height fog and all these other things. You can find separate tutorials for these. This is mostly to make it look nice, which we're more concerned about the functionality in this tutorial. But floor is going to be a static mesh object. This is going to help hold the ball that we're going to make so that it can roll across the surface. And then our player start is just the starting point where when we hit the play button, this is where our character is going to start, right? There, it's not a ball right now. It's just a empty camera that moves around. But this player start is where our character is going to spawn when we hit the play button. So it's worth knowing that that exists. So right now, really all we have is lighting, a floor, and a player start. And that's really all we need to get started for our project. So for this next part, I want to explain the basics of the gameplay framework inside of Unreal. And we're not gonna get into all of it, but I wanna introduce the concept of a game mode, a player controller, and a pawn. So first we have nothing, we have empty space. And the first thing we may create that isn't even any one of these three is our level. So we have a level, that holds a lot of things inside of it. Now, at some point, our level is going to need to know things about the game mode, you know, rules of the game, matches, number of players, all that other stuff. But our game mode is going to connect all the different pieces inside of our level to make a certain kind of game. One of which is going to be our player controller. So imagine in a standard game, we have boxes, you know, other level things, doesn't really matter, trees, whatever, all sorts of stuff in our game. And one of the things that we want is a character that we can control. We'll call this the pawn. So we have some kind of character, a little stick figure here, right? Maybe a sword. So we control our character. Now imagine that our character has things like gold or EXP or levels or whatever. So the problem is at some point in our game, probably our character will die. So we'll delete our character. And the question is what happens to all these things that the character was holding, our gold EXP level, well, we want that to exist somewhere, which is where player controller can come in. We'll talk about player states later, but the player controller can still exist inside the world, right? We'll represent the player controller as a big empty blob in the sky. Our player controller will still exist even if our character does not exist, like our character falls into a lava pit and explodes or something. We still want some representation of the player inside the world. So um, let's draw a character again. 
Let's imagine another scenario. Let's imagine another scenario where we have a vehicle, tiny vehicle in this case. Sometimes we want to control the character, right? Sometimes we want to control the vehicle. So we want to build our structure in a way in which our player controller can control different kinds of characters at different points in the game. Because at some point, we want to control the minecart. At other points, we want to control the character when they get out. So we want to build a system where we can have one player controller that can control different kinds of characters. We'll call them pawns. Just, just a pawn is something that can be controlled by a player controller. And also, our player controller can exist even if our pawns do not. And then at some point, we spawn a character in the world. We'll call this a pawn. So we have a pawn in the world, we'll spawn it, and then our player controller will then possess our pawn and then we'll control it. So this is our system. Player controller controls a pawn. Pawn can die. Player controller still exists and control a different kind of pawn. Okay, we're back inside of Unreal. I wanna show you something when I hit the play button. If I hit the play button, you're gonna see a lot of these yellow objects down here whenever we are inside the game world that get spawned during gameplay. And you'll see a lot of stuff here. Game mode, game network manager, game session, player controller, player state, player camera manager, default pawn, a lot of stuff. So when you hit the play button, it seems like it's just magically working, but a lot of these little pieces are doing a lot of the lifting here. And we wanna learn a little bit more about how they work. For now, I'm gonna talk about the game mode base, the player controller and the pawn, because that's the basics of how we can get a character that's moving around. It's important to understand that a lot of these extra objects get created whenever we hit the play button and we want to customize that some. So let's create our own game mode, our own player controller, and our own pawn. And then we can customize how those things work. So I'm going to come down here inside of our underscore game folder. I'm going to right click, create a new blueprint class. And the first thing, let's create a game mode base. So you can read some descriptions here if you want to know more about some of these major systems. Defines the game being played, its rules, scoring, and other facets of the game type. This is to let you know generally what this object should be responsible for and it's a good guide later on whenever you're trying to figure out where you should put a variable or whatever so i'm going to click game mode base and we're going to call this ball for the name of our game game mode because these are such major actors to me it usually makes sense to define the type inside the name a lot of times we wouldn't but this is a pretty major component of our game so i think it makes sense let's go ahead and save that we're also going to make our player controller so another blueprint class go to player controller right this one responsible for controlling a pawn used by the player we're going to name this ball player controller we're going to right click save sometimes i do save all but you can also right click save if you want to be more specific remember this player controller is always going to exist whether or not we are actually controlling a pawn right this is just our digital self inside the game world and then i'm also going to right click create a blueprint class pawn this is going to be something that can be possessed and controlled by the player controller in this case it'll be our ball we'll call this ball pawn now you might be thinking why didn't we create a character usually a character is a more specific kind of pawn with a lot of extra capability for the most part it's for like skeletal type of characters with running animations and more complex systems we're just controlling a ball, so something very simple that is not a humanoid type of character. A lot of times you can just use a pawn. It's a lot simpler. Hit the save all button, save selected. We have our three objects, but we need to connect them. And our game mode is going to be where we connect a lot of our major game components inside of our gameplay framework. So let's open up our ball game mode. If you double click, it's going to open up a window. Over on the right, you're going to see a lot of things over here. This is where we connect the different pieces for this particular game mode for our ball game. So I'm going to look on the right. You're going to see some classes. I'll just minimize some of this. For our ball game mode, we want to define a special kind of player controller that we are building custom for our ball game. That's going to be our ball player controller. And then we're going to have our default pawn class. This is the pawn that will be spawned in the level when we hit the play button. I don't want the default one. I want the ball pawn. So let's go down to ball pawn. So it's ball player controller, ball pawn. I think that's all we need. Let's hit compile save. Now, if I hit the play button, you're going to see something. Hit play, nothing happens. Now I'm showing you this because we have not defined this game as having this particular game mode yet. This is all the default stuff. We don't want the default. We want a custom one that we can build on. So in order to assign a game mode to this level, 
We have a couple different options. I'm going to show you the world settings option, which is over here under world settings. So for world settings, if you don't see this, you can go to window and you can get your world settings right here. These are a lot of settings that apply to many different parts of your game. There's a lot of stuff in here, but one of the important parts is our game mode. By default, the game mode override is set to none. This means use all the default stuff. We don't want that. We want to click the drop down here and we're going to click on ball game mode. Now, because we customize this, you're going to see when we slot it in, now we are using the ball game mode. It will pull from inside that game mode object, which is where we define the ball pawn and the ball player controller as well. Now, if we want to add additional things, we could open this back up later on. We'll probably do a custom player state, for example, or whatever else we can add additional ones, but we're going to start simple, but that's where you could control all of that. So we're going to save and we're going to hit play now and you will see ball game mode, right? This is our game mode now with ball pawn and ball player controller, which are being pulled from the game mode. So this is what we want, because once we have a more specific kind of player controller and a more specific kind of pawn, then we can define more rules inside of that for our game, right? Not the default. Now we can start to customize it. And this is how we want to start off organizing our game pieces before we just start throwing code different places. This is a cleaner approach. Okay, let's customize our ball pawn so that we can actually get a ball inside of our level. So to add a mesh to our pawn, we would click the add button and we can see a lot of components here. You could just add the sphere directly right here or you could click on static mesh and you could customize what kind of mesh you want. I'm going to show you the static mesh version. So if we hit static mesh and we come over here, we hit the drop down and you're going to see that if I scroll down, we're going to see all different kinds of cubes and spheres and things. This is where you would select your custom mesh if you wanted to do that. But because I'm doing a, a ball game, I really only need a sphere. And just because there's multiple different kinds of sphere here, and I don't want you to get confused and mess up things later, I'm going to delete my static mesh and I'm just going to add a sphere mesh. This is just so that we get the same kind of sphere without having to import anything. But you could customize yours if you wanted for other kinds of pawns. I am going to replace the material though, just to show you that you can. You can really replace it with anything you see in here. I like to have some kind of detail on the material just so you can see it rolling a little bit better. So I'm going to say, I think I found one tech M tech with the starter content over here, M underscore tech hex pulse. It'll kind of change colors a little bit, which will look kind of cool. So once we get this selected, we can compile save. This is going to be what our ball looks like inside of our level. And while we have our mesh here, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this the scene root. And just so you understand what that is, if I were to add additional components, like let's say audio, we could even move the mesh over here if we wanted. This is going to be the root of our blueprint. And in this case, it wouldn't make sense to have the mesh be separate from the root. So I just want to define that more clearly. So I'm going to delete this audio thing over here too. I'm going to also select my sphere and zero it out. Zero, zero, zero. Okay. So I want my mesh to represent the root of my object and it'll also make it easier to drag around inside of a level if I ever have to do that. So to make our sphere the root, we just drag and drop onto our default scene root. See, it'll disappear. Now this is the root object and I can't really move it around because it's the root. But if I had other objects inside, I could move those around. We're going to scroll down to physics where it is simulate physics. We are going to use physics forces to move our ball around. I think it makes more sense for a ball rolling type of game. It's going to be easier to simulate. So let's check this check mark right here. This will allow us to actually apply physics to our pawn. And another thing I'm going to do down in collision over here, our collision presets, click the drop down and assign this to a pawn. This just means that it's going to set up all the defaults for things that it'll block and overlap and ignore to represent typical pawn behavior. So other kinds of characters, you wouldn't want them to get blocked by power-ups or other characters or whatever. This is a good template setup for pawns, so it makes sense to assign that. If you want something more custom, you could click custom and do that. But for us, it doesn't really make sense. I'm going to go back to pawn here and we'll compile save. The last thing I want to show you is that if we hit the play button, you're going to notice something. We see that the ball pawn is in the scene. You can see it over here but we're not controlling it. This is because we have spawned the ball pawn in the scene and we have our ball player controller, but we need to actually have our player controller possess the ball pawn. So there's a couple different ways you can do that, but we're just going to auto possess it for now, which means if we go back into our ball pawn, the last setting we want, if we click on the self up here at the very top, we're going to get a couple extra special settings. And what we're looking for is auto possess player disabled. 
we want to possess it. And we're saying we are player zero. So this means essentially player one. If we had multiple players, this would be more complex, but assign this to player zero. And we're saying that player one will automatically possess the ball pawn when it's created when we hit play. So there we go. Now we're still not seeing it. And this is probably a camera problem since right now it doesn't know what to do with the camera. So let's go ahead and configure that. We're going to open up our ball pawn again and let's add something called a spring arm. Now a spring arm essentially positions the camera in space relative to the thing that it is trying to look at. If I click on sphere, which is remember is our root now, we click add, we're gonna type spring arm. There, you'll see it. Click that. This is the distance that our camera is going to be behind the ball. We can also make this more clear by clicking on spring arm and clicking on add and we'll type in camera. And now we can see our camera will float behind the player. Now this is probably too close. So let's configure this a little bit more. I have some settings here. I'm going to start off with 1000 for the target arm length on the spring arm. You're going to see what that does pretty quickly. It moves the camera back. So this is the distance away from the pawn that our camera is going to situate. You can also see that if I add an offset, so let's do a target offset of, I think I have 800 here. So you can customize this some where we're, you know, we can position it above the player. And the last thing we need to do is actually tilt the camera down. So select the camera. I'm going to hit E to go into rotation. I think about 40 degrees is fine. Compile, save. And you're going to see something. If I hit the play button, hopefully this works. Okay, so if I hit play, you're going to see we have our camera, our ball, and it spawns inside the level. It's not moving. That's the next thing we're going to look at. But as long as we get this, we know that we have a pawn that gets created when we hit play mode, and we have our player controller that is possessing it. By default, when we hit play, it will spawn at the player start like that. But if we set up our game this way, if we were to right click and spawn over here, you can't really see it, but uh, we can right click and play from anywhere, which is kind of nice, right? Like if we we're testing our level and we just wanted to um, run our character through a little challenge, uh, we can right click and play from anywhere we want, which is the nice thing about having our game mode set up is we can do things like that. If you don't do that and you just hit play, we can define the player start for the actual game at a particular location. So hopefully your player is spawning. Make sure that you figure that out before continuing. Then we're going to look at input and get our pawn moving.